sometimes we can feel hungry because the body wants nutrients. But if you just have a glass of water with minerals in it, salt, um, shalajit, other things, some teas that are very high in vitamins and minerals, and that will satiate you because your body needed the minerals to keep going and enzymes as well, some supplements. Uh, for instance, I'll have bison liver supplements uh, that I sell. Just It's just capsules of dried liver. Mm. So that gives my body the nutrients that it needs to continue on. Uh, maybe if I'm traveling or something and I have no access to good food if I'm on the plane or in the airport, but I'll have some liver capsules and that gives my body nutrients without this huge dose of calories. Not that I'm against calories, but then I can just keep on going. The hunger is satiated. And I think people make the mistake of if I'm hungry, I need a huge meal, but it's not necessarily always the case. It's just that your body is requiring certain minerals, which happen to be in food. Mm -hmm. And the raw food is so, so impactful. And it's why I talk about it now. Um, in general, the concept of when we cook, the heat is going to, just like anything, you put anything in a fire, eventually it's going to break down and burn and become charcoal and become, you know, dead matter. The same principle is even if you're cooking a little bit or char grilling, charcoaling a steak, the outside of that, and to some degree, depending on how much you cook it, is also going to be on the way towards that dead charcoal material. So the enzymes, vitamins, minerals, water soluble uh, vitamins and minerals that are in meat, which then obviously you're cooking something, the water leaves out of the steak. If you've ever had an overcooked steak, it's dry and sits in your stomach like, oh man, I just need to lie down. Mm. That doesn't happen when you have raw foods. And yeah. um, don't take that as to I need raw kale smoothies mm. because that's not also what I eat. You know, I'm, I'm having raw animal foods predominantly, fruits, which obviously you don't cook, but they're the foods that our bodies are, they work the best with mm. and having them raw means that you're going, you know, raw milk, obviously, rather than pasteurized. Pasteurization is a method of cooking, a method of heating it up. The bacteria dies, the enzymes break apart, uh, the proteins denature. Uh, and having this raw mentality for everything that I eat now enables me to, one, you save time cooking, less dishes, <laughs> which is great. Uh, and then you're eating less, you're, I'm staying like muscular. It's not like I'm fading away because the nutrients are there uh, without the cooking process. Mm. Yeah. The, has your perspective on digestion, uh, you kind of hit on this, but has your perspective on digestion changed as you started incorporating more raw foods? Because like you were saying, like I found that I don't get f like that full feeling, but I feel satiated when I have some raw food in the diet. Yeah. And I like my digestion is way better. Like I don't get that like any sort of like bloating or kickbacks from eating more raw foods. Yeah. Digestion is really number one. Um, I think it was Hippocrates, all disease starts in the gut and that starts with the mouth. Um, but if, if you feel like a upset stomach, like everyone knows how that feels, mm -hmm. it's probably common in the vast majority of people to have bloating, indigestion, irritable bowel syndrome, ulcerative mm -hmm. colitis is what these names are given to the response of the body to frankenfoods and garbage. And yeah, of course it's going to be uh, inflamed, but to call it this like disease that we have, it's just the body's natural response to what you're putting in. It's either uh, the worst thing, which is the processed foods, the seed oils and everything. Uh, and then the next, it's like you may be eating really good foods, but if you're cooking them all, then your body is not able to have the enzymes or digest it and you get this like heaviness. When you're having raw animal foods, you don't get that. You should be able to eat when your digestion is optimal. Uh, and some even some cooked foods are like that as well, depending on how you prepare it. Some plant foods that breaking them down through cooking is a little bit better. You should be able to eat and then go for a run. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to eat and then be like, oh man, I need to lie down for a while. Like that's a signal that your body is not processing what you're putting in efficiently and using that digestive uh, feedback loop to see what foods agree with you. And that can change for different people. If what I say is something is healthy for you and then you try it, but you feel bad every time you have it, your digestion is poor, then okay, that's a signal to to stop eating and, and that's also like if you feel really good having more carbohydrates but someone that's on carnivore is like carbohydrates are terrible for you trust your body more so than their particular experience which may be uh really specific to their situation which is helping them and they should listen to their body and you know talk about that but your body is going to be unique there are these general principles that obviously i'm giving out that are generally true for most people about less cooking and all the rest of it. 
but there are certain things that maybe your body doesn't tolerate that someone else would and that can go back to where your genetics are from where your family has hailed for you know generations and generations your body is going to be adapted more so to that way of eating than if you're eating something from the other side of the world and mm. maybe you do better with higher fat content and someone would do better with more carbohydrates all other things equal this is the experimentation and the personal responsibility and discipline that comes into forming what you feel the best eating mm. yeah <clears throat> the aversion to raw foods is really i i just deduce it down to it being a mental psyop i remember um after listening to your podcast with josh rayner gold it's so maybe 2000, I think it was probably 2022. I convinced myself, I was like, you know what? I'm going to try a raw meat diet for a month in San Diego. So I was going to the local farmer's market, connected with perennial pastures. And I remember staring at like, I had like a piece of uh, chopped up ribeye, regenerative. I melted some grass fed butter on top of it, balsamic, mm. sea salt. And I remember thinking like, am Yum. I going to die after I eat this? <laughs> and I had like half of it. And I, there's very few foods where you actually feel this pulsation of energy after you eat it. And this vitality and my my gut felt amazing my stomach felt flat after i ate it and i just wanted to go for a walk and work out afterwards and so i did that for a month straight and i would post about it and i had a lot of friends from back home that would be like dude are you you're little you're crazy like you're literally really? gonna die eating this <laughs> and i remember thinking to myself like you have no problem going to a sushi restaurant and getting sashimi and eating raw <clears throat> salmon and tart all these other things and you eat tartare but the concept of me eating a raw steak makes you crazy. Like I, I just remember thinking, I'm like, this has to just be a mental psyop that's just been imprinted into us by Western society. Yeah, it's it's a very strange uh, mental block that people have. And contextually, like you said, beef tartare is a thing, uh, sushi is raw fish, uh, but that because we haven't contextually eaten it in the Western world in that way, like even a very, very rare steak, where you're cooking the outside and then both sides like briefly what's the inside oh it's it's raw meat yeah like, but people accept that and eat at the restaurant but i'm just cooking it 15 percent less on the outside and then eating the same thing and then it's like well, well that is out of order yeah <laughs> it doesn't make any sense uh, and then you, exactly you try it and you feel incredible and everyone's like that may your bacteria the parasites it's like <laughs> no it's it's literally the opposite but i think it comes back to you know, in our world, it's accepted raw milk's great. You know, the good bacteria help you process it more. But even that, most people are like, raw milk, mate, you're going to die. Yeah. yeah. I was like, well, if I'm going to die, then like, I've been doing it for years. Like, when is it going to happen? Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, but I think that, that it comes back to the really the larger scientific knowledge and the pharmaceutical perspective of all bacteria is bad you have to kill bacteria antibacterial hands um you know put a mask on so you're not breathing in it you know people that have never set foot on a farm it's like yeah there's bacteria everywhere and that's fine and if it's mm. a healthy natural microbiome of nature in the dirt and in the soil that's good for you but because they've they've only ever got their meat from a store in a plastic packaging uh and cooked everything and that's just what they grew up with mm. they're just unconscious and unaware of that and i think slowly opening yourself up to that is is really um it becomes very empowering and understanding and like bringing yourself closer to nature is you know you're not fighting against your body you're not fighting against nature and there's a, a lot of this fear dissolves and it's it's primarily fear-based like you're scared mm. of what the raw meat is and the raw milk is going to do to you and make you sick and even if you if you if you really believe in that stuff too much then you can manifest those symptoms of, you know, if you do try it one day and you say, oh, this is going to make me sick, this is going to make me sick, and then you feel sick. Yeah. yeah. But that's not the case for most people that try it. They go, oh, like I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Like I feel even better. Yeah. And so that is just evidence that we've been lied to in a lot of ways about food, primarily because they want to, you know, keep people sick. Mm. They want to monopolize. Uh, you can only have food that's gone through an FDA approved facility. Otherwise, like, you know, and then they create these legal barriers and these regulations to stop you from just going to your local farmer and buying their beef. No, it has to go through our processing facility. There's profit involved in that. And there's a lot of mechanisms like that that just mean we're going to be cut off from our natural way of living. Mm. I think food is such an amazing lens to pull back the veil that like social pro programming can have on us because it gives you that immediate feedback loop of like, am I feeling the way I'm feeling, yes or no? And is it the same as the way that this societal um, 
pressure or societal norm is like thinking that I should be feeling. So the self-experimentation around food, I think, is a great gateway for a lot of people to yeah. actually start to like push back against some of these um, social designs that make us think like what's normal and what's not. 